Where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. I don't know about you, but I'm excited today. I'm excited because he lives and I can face tomorrow. How many of you are excited today? Because I believe the Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. But this is the day that the Lord has made. He said, we ought to rejoice and be glad in him. Amen. Amen. Enter into his courts with praise. Amen. Enter into his courts with thanksgiving. I'm just thankful today just to see another day. Amen. The songwriter said, it's another day's journey, and I'm glad about it. Right. Amen. Amen. All praises to God and all Thank praises you, to the Father today. I'm just excited to be here today, and I give honor to God and respect to Pastor You and all the uh, pastors that are present, and all of you, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Amen. What an honor to be in front of God's people just one more day. Amen. It might have been a journey getting here, but we're all here today. Amen. And I always say when I'm driving, I'm just on heaven's highway. Amen. So whatever happens, happens. Because I have a destination, you, and I have a mission for God. Amen. So whatever happens on the freeway, no matter how they drive, no matter no matter which way we have to turn, no matter which way we have to pull over, no matter which way the traffic is going, I have a mission. Amen. And my mission is heaven bound. So I'm excited today to be here. And let's enter into a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Father God, I thank you today, Father God. I thank you for allowing us to be here today. I'm asking, Father God, if you would just step me aside. And allow your Holy Spirit to work within me. For Father, I'm just a vessel. I'm just a messenger of God. And Father, I ask for your Holy Spirit to touch this sanctuary, this sanctuary today. I ask, Father, you touch us individually as well as collectively. I pray, Father God, for a miracle in this place today, Father God. I'm a believer, Father God. That miracles do happen, Father. Amen. Yes. I'm a miracle today, Father God, a living testimony oh, yeah. of how you touch my body. And I thank you today, Father God. These are the blessings we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 For we're in the midst of the anointed people Amen. of God. You don't know who you're sitting next to, for God has sent you an angel. So be blessed today because the one you're sitting next to is blessed. And if we all join in together today, what a time we're going to have in Jesus Christ today. As I was praying, I asked the Holy Spirit, how shall I render a message today? And I pondered on it and pondered on it. I had this message, I had this message. But the Holy Spirit led me back to speak to you today on in the midst of a storm. How many of you have been through a storm? Amen. All of us have been through storms. Amen. But God has set the atmosphere and the ambience in this room. There's a sweet anointing in this place. And God has already set the anointing for the message to go through. The songs have already been sung. We've been in worship. We worship the King, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. We worshiped Him. We bowed down before Him. Now there's a word from the Lord. So if you would turn with me, it's a very familiar story, but God showed me in the spirit realm that when we began to, when I began to preach this sermon, something is going to happen. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord. Yeah. I want to come from the book of Jonah. If you would turn with me to Jonah, Very familiar passage. In the midst of a storm. I like to talk about someone who was in the midst of the storm, but how he was transformed from the storm. So the Bible tells us, be ye not conformed, but transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. And I just want to read a couple of verses before I go into the story. It says, now... The word of the Lord came into Jonah, the son of the Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for the wickedness is come before me. But Jonah rose up to flee into Tarshish from the presence of the Lord, and went down to Joppa, 
and he found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare thereof and went down into it and go with and go with them unto Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord sent out a great wind into the sea, and there was a mighty tempest in the sea, so that the ship was like to be broken. I want to talk briefly in the midst of the storm. I would like to bring your attention again to the book of Jonah. We're going to describe these passages as a second chance. The privilege of God's message, the word of the Lord, it came to Jonah. And when it came to Jonah, Jonah was described as a prophet. And we all know today that a prophet is a messenger. So all of us are messengers of God. But Jonah had an opportunity to carry the precious word of God. And if you look at that in the natural sense and look at you and I today, we have that opportunity yeah. to carry the message every day. Amen. We have that opportunity that God has given to us to take the message from here to the east, to the west, to the north, and the south. But how many of us today are carriers of his word? Can we be dependable? Can God trust his word unto us? What well, Jonah was commanded to preach repentance. Now when God gives a command, God expects for us to follow it out. So Jonah was a man that was <clears throat> given this command, and as he was given the command, he's supposed to teach about repentance. <laughs> God has already given us the authority to go ye out and teach all nations a great commission. He's telling us, teach, teach repentance. Allow them <clears throat> to come back to me. Teach salvation. Allow them to come back to me. We don't know the day of the hour in which Jesus is coming back. But he's coming back. So we have to, as uh, <coughs> Christians, get about our father's business. So Jonah, was, Jonah, at this particular time, he was commanded to preach. Matthew 3 and, and 2 says, Repent ye, for the kingdom of, of heaven is at hand. What did Jonah do like we do today? Jonah did the opposite. When God tells us to go east, sometimes we go west. Sometimes. When God tells us to wait a minute, we go forward. When God tells us to turn around, we be still. But God is in control. What Jonah missed at the beginning of the story was that God already had him in control. When God sends you out in the mission, he also makes sure that you're clothed in the right armor of God. God doesn't send a wounded soldier to the front line. So God always equips you with what you need to do. God has already predestined our steps. Thank you, Lord. See, what we're in today, God is already in your tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So Amen. God has already <laughs> predestined a mission for each and every one yeah. of us. Amen. And our mission is the Great Commission. We heard earlier from the pastor, we have a mission to do here at the church. In order to build the kingdom of God, we've already been commanded by the pastor as he had word from God, we've already been commanded already. So we're commissioned yes. to do what God has asked us to do. Enlarge the kingdom of God. <coughs> so when Jonah did the opposite, and the reason why I like this story, because it shows him being in the midst of of a storm, but it shows the victory at the end. Oh, Amen? Amen? Storms doesn't last forever. But you have to remember there's always a warning sign before destruction. When you see a storm coming, the clouds turn black. That's the warning sign that something is getting ready to happen. So we have to make sure that we always adhere to the warning sign. Now, if you look at Jonah, I want to just create a little scenario. Look at the situation Jonah is in. Jonah had his own agenda. As Christians today, we have our own agendas. Yeah. Even though it's printed out, it's outlined on which way to go and what to do, we still deviate. And we still have our own agenda. I want you to think of an airplane. When God sends you out a mission... He speaks to the pilot. So I want you to think of yourselves on an airplane. 
And we're flying world for Jesus. Amen. So we're aboard world for Jesus. Our pilot is God. Our co-pilot is Jesus Christ. Amen. But when you feel a little turbulence, it's just the Holy Spirit moving. So you got to rest assured that whenever God sends you somewhere, God equips. So when you're flying in the spiritual realm, you're flying on the word of God, you're flying on the intercessors, you're flying on your prayers. But Jonah didn't have this in mind. Jonah's a self-made man. He just thought that, you know, if I sit back and relax here, that everybody else would do everything, everything that needs to be done. And when it's time for me to do things, everything will be done already. And that's how we think, too, in the natural, that if I sit back, everything will get done. But God says in his word, he says that I'll supply all your needs through his riches and glory. Amen. See, we have to be doers and not only hearers of the word of God. Amen. I love this story. Because it teaches us how to stay out of the storm. The Bible said Jonah ran away from the Lord. When we run away, we run away from the Lord. John 14 says, I go to prepare a place for you. When God goes to prepare a place for us, he did not say it will be easy. The road is sometimes it gets tough and it gets weary. But he did not say it will be easy. But he said in his word that I am the way. The truth and the life, no man come to the Father by me. So there is the right way. Amen? Amen? So what happens now? God sends this violent storm which threatened to, to break the ship. Now if you know the story, when he sent the storm, everybody was afraid. The ship was just tossing and turning. All the sailors and things that were on the ship didn't know what to do. That's true. And if you look at the natural sense, when we get in chaos and we get in situations and we don't know which way to turn, all we have to do is look up oh, to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Yeah. The Bible said all we have to do is ask and it shall be given. Yeah. Knock and the door shall be opened. Yeah. Seek and you shall find. Yeah. Yeah. When we get to the time we're asking, it's too late. We've already went through the devastation of the storm. So a lot of times we have to stop, pray, and wait for God. So Jonah, at this particular time, Jonah spoke and said, throw me overboard. Because at this time, remember, they, were, they had lots. And whoever had the longest lot, they knew that's the person that did it, in a sense. Okay? <laughs> so what happened here, Jonah said, just throw me over. No one complained. <laughs> they were ready to throw Jonah over. That's right. And that's how we are today, too. No one's complaining. You're ready to go. Okay. You know, that's the way Jonah was. So that particular time, they threw him over. When they threw him over, the water began to just struggle. And that's how it is with us today. We struggle through the storms like Jonah was struggling through the storm. Now, can you imagine a big boat now and you're getting tossed? And oh, yeah. It's all over the place. Oh, yeah. God was going to destroy the land. He was going to destroy the people. God was an angry God. So finally the ship, when they threw Jonah uh, off the ship, the water became calm. This is Jesus now interacting. Jesus would come in the time of a storm. Jesus would come whatever the situation is that you think that I can't handle anymore. Jesus will come in. Amen? So Jonah, now this is how the story progressed. Jonah, at this particular time, he went into the whale's mouth, okay? I want to create an atmosphere so you can see where Jonah is right now. So right now, he's in, um, in the fish's mouth. So instead of drowning, this is where the transformation took place, in the, in the, in the uh, belly of the fish. So a lot of times in your situation, the transformation doesn't take place sometime until you're in the midst of is when you're in the transformation. When you come to the cutting edge and you think there's nowhere else to go, that's your transformation time. When you're, when you're standing up against the wall, you think there's nowhere to go, that's your transformation time. When you're laying down, there's nowhere else to look but up, that's your transformation time. Jonah could have died, but that was not God's ultimate plan. That's right. 
When we get to those times in our lives and we feel like this is the end, it's not God's timing. That's right. Amen. God can come in and, and, and calm the storm. Yes. So this is what was happening this particular time. And when I looked at the story at this particular time, and as I was meditating on it in the middle of the night, I said, God, you are a great God. Because you're only present, you are omniscient. You're right. all-knowing. You're everywhere at the same time. What a great God that we serve. Amen. But we give him little praise and little worship. That was the time for worship. Amen. Because sometimes we give him little praise and we give him such little worship. And he's a big God. Yes. He's a loving God. He's Alpha. He's Omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's everlasting. What a great God we serve. What an almighty God we serve. Amen? Praise God. Jonah had to speak to the atmosphere because the atmosphere he was in was dark. How many of you know that when you're in an atmosphere and it's dark, you still can speak in the atmosphere? This is when you claim things to happen. This is when you realize your relationship with God. See, it's not about religion, but it's about relationship with God. How strong is your relationship to God? Amen? Amen. I can imagine uh, Jonah in the whale's mouth. It's dark, nowhere to go, nobody to turn to. That's how we feel, just like Jonah. And many of us had Jonah experiences where there's nowhere to go, no one to turn to. All I can turn to is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. All I can say is help Jesus. Sometimes I can only say help. Amen. But he's yes. there. Thank you, Amen. And that's why he is an on-time God. Uh-huh. So Jonah went through this transformation. But thank God that God's mission was for him to live and not die. So when you think, when you get to that situation in your life and you think all is gone and all is lost, just start thanking Jesus. Because he already had the, had the situation under control. Yes. When Pastor Yee was talking about the building, I said to myself, it's already under control. Amen. God has it already in control. Yes. See, Amen. today is history. Yes. But we're talking about his story. Yes. Yes. Not history, but his, Jesus Christ, his story today. Amen. And, it, and his story says that he is a provider. Amen. He's a rewarder of those who seek him diligently. He says in his word that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man coming to the Father by him. So I'm glad to say that the relationship that I have with him grows stronger and stronger every day. But how many of you know today? New levels, new devils. Amen? So we always have to climb a level. Your yesterday's prayers can't work for today. You have to move to the next level. And moving to the next level means that I've got to recognize who I am in Christ Jesus. I have to recognize that I am a member of the royal priesthood. I have to remember and remind myself that I am an ambassador of Christ. Amen? Remind yourself daily who you are in your transformation period. And this is what Jonah had to do in, his, in the transformation period. He had to be reminded who he is. But God is a God of a second chance. Amen. No matter what we went through, no matter what we've done, God is a God of a second chance. Sometimes it's just between you and God. But God is a God of a second chance. Amen. And I just love that about God because we could have been all dead and gone. Oh, yeah. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And I thank God today that he is a God of a second chance. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. So having Jonah experience this type of atmosphere, only thing he can do in prayer is pray. He was in the whale's mouth for three days. If you look through the Bible, a lot of things happen in numbers of three. Yeah. Amen? Mm-hmm. Here's an example. Number three is mentioned 467 times in the Bible. Jesus prayed three times in the Garden of Gethsemane before his arrest. Yeah. He was placed on the cross at the third hour. 
Three is the number of resurrection. Three witnesses that Jesus transfig at the tr transfiguration on Mount Hermon. John, Peter, and James. The Bible only mentions the names of the three angels. Michael, Gabriel, and Lucifer. So as you can see, there's something significant about the number three. Yeah. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God is described in the very beginning of Revelation as being, which is, which was, which to come. Amen. Revelation 1 and 4. I don't know about you, but I just get excited when I talk about the Word of God yeah. because I can see all these things in the spirit realm happening. Yes. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. not just a story. It's not some mystical thing, but it's real. Yeah. And you can see it happening in your life. Thank when you begin to grow spiritually, things begin to happen differently. Yeah. You begin to have a different outlook. Yes. You begin to walk differently. You oh, begin yeah. to speak differently. Yeah. You begin to pray differently. Mm -hmm. And that all comes with the elevation of our Lord and Jesus Amen. Christ. Mm -hmm. This is the time Jonah obeyed God. When he got out of the whale's mouth, there was a transformation. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to get all beat up and stumble <laughs> under and <laughs> choked, you know, before we do the right thing. But Jonah, he learned a lesson. How many times do we have to go back to the place of the trans transfiguration? Yes. It's time now to be transformed Amen. by the renewing of your mind. Yes. So Jonah had this opportunity, but again, God was a God of a second chance. Yes. So I think about that and I say, God, what if? We have so many what ifs in our lives. What if I had done it this way? What if I didn't go? What if, I didn't, what if I didn't do what God called me to do? So many what ifs. That's right. That's very true. And Jonah, I'm sure, I'm just in the spirit, spiritual realm, that Jonah had that situation. What if? What if God decided to destroy me when I was in the whale's mouth? Mm -hmm. But God, being all loving that he is, gave him another second chance. Yes, he did. And I love that about the story. I love going back and reading the story because it reminds me that God is a loving God. It reminds me that if I continue to persevere, continue to push, and what is push? Pray yes. until something happens. Yes. I don't want to dwell in the mess. What is mess? Men embracing the Satan's strategy. Mess. I want to stay on this side. Yes. I want to stay on this side where I know where the victory is. Oh yeah, yes, And I'm just excited and uh, uh, of how God did this transformation. It reminds me of a testimony. Growing up as a little girl, it reminds me of the time that I said, "Lord, I don't think that I'm capable of doing this. They won't listen to me. <laughs> Lord, I don't know if I if I have the right words to say. If I can pronounce these words." But whom God chooses, yes. God uses. Yes, he does. It doesn't matter where you came from. It matters where you're going to. Amen? Amen. So I want to encourage you today. Be transformed and not conform to this world. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Amen? Amen. So when you look at that... <coughs> And you think about the goodness of God and what God has in store for you, you ought to get excited. Amen. You ought to get excited. Oh, yes. You ought to get Thank excited. Amen. 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 Is there anybody here excited right now? You ought to get excited for the goodness of God. And you ought to get excited when his word declares to us that I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. You ought to get excited because it doesn't matter where I go. God is omnipresent. He's there. No matter how much I mess up, he's still there to, to pat me on my back, to take and give me that big hug. So I always look at and say, Dad, I messed up. <laughs> and Dad clings up. Amen? So I thank God for that today. And I just thank God because even when it's time to talk to God's people, there's always a revelation that God would give you for his people. I'm just a messenger. I'm just a servant. 
of God, willing to take his word wherever he wants me to take it, willing to go through the storm to get to my destination. We're going to have storms and we're going to have trials and we're going to have tribulations. But through it all, it's to the end, it's at the end of the race that I'm trying to go. But the race is not won by the swift but to the one who endured it That's to right. the end. Amen? Yes. Amen? I might be knocked down. I might be crawling to the finish line, but my destination is heaven bound. Thank you. And the only way I'm going to get there is to be persistent. Yes. Is to keep going. Amen. So I'm encouraging you today, Thank no you, matter Lord. what the situation looks like, Thank you, that may not be the outcome that what Jesus has in store That's for you. Right. Yeah. You just have to keep moving. And keep praying yes. and keep knowing that God is good. And just thank Him even when you don't see it. Yes. Just thank Him for it. Yes. Even if you don't feel it, just thank Him for it. Because I heard a minister once said, he said, the Holy Spirit is just like the wind. You don't see it, but you hear it and you feel it. Amen. And I thought about that. And every time I go outside and, I, and there's a big wind coming, I just say, thank you, Holy Spirit. Because it feels like just what he told me. You know, I can't hear it always, but I can feel it. You know, and I know that it's there. So I thank God for, for that. Recognize the Holy Spirit on the inside. Recognize who he is and how great he is. And how he works in your life. The more you stir it up, the Holy Spirit in the inside, the stronger you become. Amen. And don't be afraid to say, Holy Ghost, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. Or don't be afraid to say, I messed up, clean me up. Mm -hmm. It's just like the potter's house. When the vessel was set on the shelf, yeah. it wasn't to be forgotten. God sometimes has to take the vessel and he has to smooth out, smooth oh, it out. Hallelujah. Shattered, but not broken. Amen. Wounded, but not beyond repair. And when God sees fit, he goes to the shelf and he takes you off the shelf. Now you can be used. Amen. Amen. Willing vessels. Amen. Jonah started off not being a, will, uh, not being a, will, a willing vessel. Yeah. But toward the end, Jonah had the biggest transformation in his life. He decided it was more important to follow Jesus than to follow man. Yeah. The city began to believe Jonah. Yes. Because of who he is. How many, how many of you know that it's the anointing that makes the difference? Oh, yes. Amen. Now, as I'm coming to a close, I want to give you a spiritual alphabet. I bet you said, we know our ABCs. <laughs> but how many of you know your spiritual ABCs? Right, yeah. exactly. I, I don't know about you, there's just something in this place today, yeah, Pastor yeah. Ryan. There's an anointing in this place today. Oh, yes. yeah. There's such a sweet aroma in Thank this place. You. You. And I know God is looking upon the world for Jesus. He's saying right now, good and faithful servants, job well done. I know he's looking upon the sanctuary. And he's saying, don't worry, I have it under control. I know he's looking at the sanctuary right now. And he said, because you've been faithful and you've been coming, if you have laid beside anything that, that might just de detour you or anything that compromise, and your focus is on me. God is pleased with that type of service. If I had to give you an al the alphabets, I would say A, always be willing. B, be brave in the things of God. C, be cautious. Stay with God. D, be devoted in what you do. E, be eager to know more about God. There's never an end or finish. Know more about God. F, be forgiving. Forgive one another. G, go and get our people. Go and tell someone about Jesus. Go to the utmost part of the world. Wherever God sends you, go. H, be helpful to one another. This is not a one man's army. Right. Be helpful to one another. I, be in the image of God. We want to be in the image wherever we go. What's on the inside should reflect what's on the outside. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, J, be joyous in the Lord. 
If he's our Lord and Savior in Jesus Christ, be joyous in him. Yeah. Be happy yeah. that you have a Lord and Savior Jesus Christ yeah. that you can call 24-7. Amen? Yeah. The line is never busy. Yeah. There's not a call waiting. You can call on Jesus anytime. Yeah. And K, be kind to one another. Yeah. L, let go and let God. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just let it go and let God. M, have the mind of Christ. Amen? Yeah. The mind of Christ. When you have the mind of man, you're easy to be detoured. You're easy be easily to go the wrong direction. But have the mind of Christ. In being the newness, walk in the newness of God. The Bible says in the book of Philippians, forget about the things that are behind you as you stretch to the prize of the high calling, who is Jesus Christ. Oh, open your heart. Be pressed toward the mark. Quench not the spirit. R, recognize that you are a member of the royal priesthood. Amen? Amen. S, seek for the new levels in God. And T, tell somebody that Christ lives. Amen? Amen. U, unfold the mysteries of God. When you read and you pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you the revelatory knowledge that you need to have. Yes. W, worship the Lord. We don't have to worship him just here. Worship the Lord. Worship in your heart. Wherever you go, worship the Lord. When you're at the grocery store and you're buying all your groceries and things like that, I have a worship in my heart because there could be a time that I wasn't able to take the basket and get the groceries and things like that. So my worship is for real. But worship him always in spirit and in truth. And why? Oh, excuse me. X, X-ray. Let the inside reflect the outside. Be the Amen. same. Amen. Why? Yeah. You are set apart and you're chosen by God. Mm -hmm. And Z, be zealous about God. Mm -hmm. Forgetting the things that are behind you. Forgetting the things that are bothering you. Forgetting the things that someone said. Forgetting the brokenness. But be new in Christ today. I challenge each and every one of you. Step out of the old and come into the new. I challenge you today to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. I transform, I mean, I, I challenge you today to let go and to let God. I challenge each and every one of you come out of the norm and walk into the supernatural things of God. I challenge you to go to the next level in God because in God we trust. Yeah, yeah. In God we trust. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just drop that in my spirit. In God we trust. And I trust God today. God is worthy. He's worthy, church. He's worthy. And I don't know about you, but I'm excited just to be here. Excited to be alive and well. And excited to preach his word just one more time. Amen. 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 Come on, everybody, stand to your feet. I just want you to grab hands to the person who's sitting next to you because there's an anointing that is transferring all over the building. You don't know what God has dropped into the hand of the person you're holding, but there's a transfer of anointing all over this room today. There are gifts in this room today. There are kings in this room. Brother Terry, there's a king in you. There's kings in this room today. When we open up praise and worship today, it was like angelical voices all over the building singing unto God, his angelical angels. There's joy when I think about what God has done. Amen. But the Holy Spirit said, have them to hold hands so we can transfer this anointing. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody might be sick in the building that need a healing today. We're going to transfer the anointing from one person to the other. Somebody might be lacking something in their lives and just need to make a decision. We're going to transfer that anointing. Somebody here just need, just need a touch of love, just compassion. We're going to transfer that anointing today. Every eye close, every eye close. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly and Gracious Father, Father God, we thank you for today. 
We thank you for what you have done. We thank you, Heavenly Father, as you're, you're ministering right now to each and every one of us, individually as well as collectively. Father God, as you're dropping right now, Father God, in our spirit, healing. Father God, if there's any among us, Father God, that need healing, your word declares by your stripes that you're healed, Father God. I ask, Lord, you heal their bodies right now, oh God. If there's anyone among us, Father God, that's that needs to make a very serious decision right now. I feel it in my spirit. Somebody needs to make a decision, Father God. I ask, Father God, that you give them wisdom and all understanding. Father God, I pray for every man in this sanctuary, Father God. For, Father, you said there's a king in them, Father God. I pray, Father God, they continue to wear their priestly garments, Father God, wherever they go, God. I pray for every woman, every child in this Thank building, Father God. Yes, Lord. Every queen, yes, Father God, that you Lord. have set apart yes, in this Lord. building. Lord. Every child, Father God. Amen. For you said a child shall lead the way, oh God. Amen. And Lord, we pray for them right now, oh God. Touch them in a mighty way, oh God. Yes, Lord. And God, let your angelical angels just saturate us right now, God. Let us feel yes. right now, Father God, your Holy Spirit, Father God, as administer our minds, our spirits. And our souls, oh God. And God, we thank you today, Father God, for this is the day the Lord has made. And we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. And Father God, as before we even open our eyes, I ask for a newness upon each and every one of us. A fresh anointing, Father God, on each and every one of us. Father God, a spirit of love, a spirit of joy, and a spirit of laughter, Father God. Weeping may endure for a night. But joy cometh in the morning, Father. And Lord, we thank you. We receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. I thank each and every one of you for this opportunity. And my prayers for you today, as we before we even leave this building, that as you leave this building, that you never that you don't leave the building where you came in. That's right. Amen? Amen? That's not a bad thing. It's just saying that we're going to another level. Thank you. Lord. We're going up higher. Yes. And I just thank God for each and every one of you. God bless you. Thank you. Oh, let's give the Lord a real clap off.